I built the world's first Wi-Fi chamber of doom. Okay, not so much of a chamber, more of a cardboard box stuffed with Wi-Fi routers, surrounded with tinfoil, so it bounces that Wi-Fi signal inside the box. But you kind of get the idea. And I'm gonna use this chamber to test if Wi-Fi is dangerous for us and the environment. And how am I gonna do that? By running a little experiment you probably did yourself when you were in little school. Let's go for a drive. From that nursery, I bought three different seeds, you know, just so we have some variety. And what do seeds have to do with Wi-Fi? Well, first let's plant them. We have one that's ready and three more to go. I'm gonna place this one at the furthest point in the house which has the least Wi-Fi signal strength. And this one I'm gonna place right by the router. Now this one I'm gonna cover in tin foil so that it has some shielding from the various signals. Now this one I'm gonna place inside the Wi-Fi chamber of doom so it gets blasted by all those Wi-Fi signals. Over the next couple of days, they will get the exact same amount of water at the exact same time of day. The idea is to see if there's any noticeable difference between where the seeds were placed in relation to the Wi-Fi. In the meantime, let's get a little bit more sophisticated with our testing. We're going to use an EMF tester. You know, the kind that is used to hunt for ghosts? Are you the gatekeeper? we're also going to use it to hunt for radio frequencies. Wi-Fi and cell phones, as we know, use radio frequency, which is a form of electromagnetic radiation. So check this out. So I've got the EMF reader. It's currently set to radio frequency and it's reading as normal. Nothing going on, but my phone is set to aeroplane mode. As soon as I take off aeroplane mode, watch this. The code starts to spike. It went from zero to... 1,168, 58, 57, it's reading, it's high, it's beeping, it's telling me Wi-Fi and phone, it's identified the source and it's saying, hey, lots of radio frequency going on right now. And to make sure that it is, in fact, the phone that's causing that, put it back to aeroplane mode and the numbers just start to drop. And of course, it's not just the phones that we have to worry about. Let's go check out what happens to the Wi-Fi router. As I'm getting closer and closer to the source, Wi-Fi router, look at those numbers, start to spike one more time. So radio frequency is just shooting straight right up there. And the same can be with one of those mesh nodes. And again, the Wi-Fi just spikes the frequency reading on the device. Why can't we just say for sure that Wi-Fi is safe or it isn't safe? Well, to understand that, we need to get a little sciencey, but um, not too much. This image shows electromagnetic spectrum. The important thing to note is that we have two types of radiation. We have ionizing and non-ionizing. So you know when you go to the dentist and they make you wear that bulletproof vest when they take an x-ray? That is because x-rays are on the ionizing side. Things in the ionizing category have enough energy to remove electrons from atoms or molecules, which basically means it can damage DNA and lead to cancer. On the other side of the graph, you get the second type of radiation, which is called non-ionizing radiation. This has a lower energy levels and does not have the ability to ionize atoms or molecules, so it cannot damage DNA. Wi-Fi technology is on the non-ionizing side, so they do not have enough energy to cause damage. But wait a minute. Microwave is also in the same zone, and we have seen what that can do to food, and none of us want to stick our hand inside a microwave. So uh, what gives? Well, a typical microwave emits 700 watts of power, which is hundreds time more than your cell phone does. And all of that is focused into one location that is trapped inside that box. To put it another way, it would take over 240 days to heat you up by one degree if you took the phone and stuck it to your skin. Actually, the heat from your screen would actually heat you up faster than the radiation would. So the intensity of the radiation makes a huge difference in its impact on our bodies. But you know what else does? Distance. Let's take our phone off airplane mode. The RF meter starts to spike straight up again. But watch this. Now, all we're gonna do is gonna go from 1,140, we're gonna take one step back. 
and look how much it's dropped already to 220 110 125 that's literally by taking one step back away from the device take another step back and now it's dropped down right right down to 22 25 40 fluctuates around there so look how much distance actually makes a difference and if i took another step well i'm getting basically no readings at all now let's go test everybody's favorite topic when it comes to radio frequency and radiation and that is the good old microwave so i'm going to switch the microwave on and you can see look at that radio frequency just spikes straight away but what about this distance thing if i take one step back sorry finn stepping over my dog there look how much it dropped just by taking one step back take another step and it drops again so if you're going to eat in the kitchen next to your microwave make sure you're not sitting literally right next to your microwave now when it comes to watching tv well my smart tv is connected to my mesh node so obviously right next to it readings are super high but again distance is your friend so all i'm going to do is take one step back and look how much it drops already and the tv is obviously helping to shield that so unless you're sitting literally on top of your router or your repeater or your mesh node or your phone well radio frequency is not too much of an issue if further you get away from the source here we go with the sciencey stuff again according to the inverse square law of physics every time you double the distance from a radio wave source you only receive a quarter of its energy, but it also works the other way around too. Get too close, you get whacked. Before we check on the status of the seeds, based on the non-ionizing stuff we just spoke about, does that mean that we are perfectly safe? Well, not quite. Remember that Wi-Fi was only introduced in 1997 to the world. Now, it was only started really getting used in the early 2000s. So long-term impact is still not guaranteed. We also remember that asbestos and nicotine were initially deemed as safe, and we all know where that landed up. Some people may also have different levels of sensitivity to radiation, so we can never make a blanket rule that everybody experiences everything at the same way at the same time. And to really give this even more complexity, for every research paper that says that it's safe, there is one that says that it isn't. So where does that leave us? Well, since we don't know for 100% certain, we need to find the line somewhere between not giving a shit and wearing a tinfoil hat. So I keep this in mind. Distance is your friend. A phone in the bag is better than a phone in your front pocket close to your neck. Also, don't sleep with the phone charging right next to you. Charge it on the other side of the room. Now, when it comes to your Wi-Fi router, ideally hardwire everything that you can and keep only limited stuff on the Wi-Fi. Keep your router in a place that you don't spend a lot of time in. Okay, it's been about six days now since I've had the seeds all over the house and one inside the Wi-Fi chamber of doom. So what do you think? Did the Wi-Fi have any impact on the growth of those seeds? This is the one that was furthest away from the Wi-Fi router and looks like all three of the c types happen to germinate there's a little bit of activity absolutely everywhere so furthest away from the wi-fi router pretty positive results next up let's do the one that's closest to the wi-fi router and this one okay this one also looks like it's got some activity is it more is it less we're going to summarize it all at the end okay you can see all three still have activity in there um, all three seeds have some germination going on here. I'm not sure that's even the right phraseology. All right, next up. This is the one that had the tin foiled, covered in tin foiled for a little bit of, of shielding from the Wi-Fi signals and the cell phone signals. Any activity there? Oh my goodness. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. hold on a second. This one is, wow. Okay, hold on. This is super interesting. Look at the difference. This is fully grown. That's absolutely amazing and completely, completely unexpected. Now I am super, super curious. If we got those results out of the one that was shielded in tinfoil, well, let's go to the extreme. What about the one that was surrounded by the Wi-Fi routers in my Wi-Fi chamber of doom? Let's take this one out. Let's go see. Any prediction? Are we going to get good results, bad results? I don't know, uh, this is looking interesting. And I guess the moment of truth is here. Let's take off the covering and see what we have going on. And, oh wow, okay. Uh, 
this looks miserable, but doesn't seem as awesome as the other one, and certainly not like the one in the turn foil. In fact, let's put them all together and compare. Okay, so the one closest to the router has got activity. You could maybe argue a little bit that it's not as cool as the one that's furthest away from the router, but that could be a variety of reasons like sun, etc. But there's no getting away from it. The one that was covered in the tinfoil has certainly performed the best. And the one that was surrounded by the Wi-Fi routers, well, that one was just shocking. So does that maybe mean Wi-Fi has some impact on our plant's life? Now, to be clear, this obviously is not in a sterile, lab-perfect environment conditions, nor is this official, conclusive scientific proof. I just wanted to see what would happen in extreme conditions, and clearly, there is a visible difference between the seeds that were inside the Wi-Fi chamber of dooms and those that were just laying around the house and those that were wrapped up in tinfoil that had the shielding from the Wi-Fi signals. Do with this info as you will and minimize your wireless connectivity. So, switch Bluetooth off whenever you're not using it and definitely switch your Wi-Fi off when you leave the house and for security reasons, which I show you in this video right over here, or watch this video right over here that YouTube thinks you should watch, hit the head down here to subscribe, give the video a thumbs up before you head out, and I'll see you in this video, or this video, or I'll see you in both. Let's go.